fear, the first of many foes. worst that could happen. Hello everyone and welcome to the first day of the new season of the British Esports Championships with colleges around the country competing to be the best at League of Legends. And right now we have AGSB against BSC. And um, I hope you don't mind that I wasn't talking during the draft, but now we get to see the draft overall. We get to see... Um, Mordekaiser in the top lane a very strong uh, dueler to match up against that Trindamir that could just be applying pressure throughout the whole game with his split push prowess we also have that Rakan in the bot lane that we're actually used to seeing from NHX um, and that will be facing up against a quite passive really Ash but then equally the Velkos is there to provide the damage uh, that Misfortune would be getting out with those double ups. And so we're kind of seeing a lane in the bot lane with this Velkos Ash versus Rakan Misfortune where Rakan is obviously always looking to engage on that Ash. Velkos is looking to get continuous poke which certainly vilifies Misfortune. It's not going to miss out on continuous poke from those constant double ups we can come to expect with that champion. What I'm also excited to see in this new year and new season of the British Esports Championships is some more of what we're used to on Lemon Curd. Basically Lemon Curd being proactive enough to get around the map to really make plays and to really have a huge impact on the game as a whole. Obviously there have been nerfs to the jungle in the new year, there have been nerfs to that experience, but I'm confident that Lemon Curd might be able to still exert that pressure that we've come to expect, even against something like this Nunu. In the mid lane what we're seeing here is a Syndra and what I would presume is the cannon, unless for some reason the cannon went top and the Trindamir went mid, or even some kind of three, three-way swap with the Velkos, but I would presume that the cannon is mid against that Syndra, which isn't something we often see these days in solo queue. So I'd be excited to see what that kind of matchup would look like against the Syndra. We're just waiting for the spectator delay here. 
not much to talk about until we really see, you know, how these teams match up against each other. The kind of difference in the calibre of players that we're looking at. We need to be able to see, come into the game and see what's going on. But in the meantime, I can look up some of them on op.gg. So it's aches on the Trindamere, according to OPGG, has a 36% win rate on Trindamere with 14 games played. So we could expect perhaps that the top lane does not go in their favour, although that's only 14 games. It's not quite representative exactly of what will happen in this game. Meanwhile, Ewan on Mordecai's is it? We can try and see. Well, his last Mordecai's a game. He lost, but he did go 15 and 4 in a ranked game. So, take from that what you will, but we might see a return to some of that 15 and 4 from him if he's able to uh, exert that pressure in the top lane. Looks like my league's crashed. Just fix that. Just have a look at the mastery points for you. And so perhaps I stand corrected about this Trindamere. If he's 173,000 points, perhaps that 36% win rate is not quite representative of his skill on the champion. But now we are one minute into the game. And obviously nothing of note has happened yet. They're just doing five point starts on both sides of the board. No one wanting to invade. Or do anything messy for this first game of the season. Flash comes out from the Nunu very early on. Not sure whether that was intentional or whether that's because he bound his smite to the wrong key. And I can't imagine we'll be seeing much from these lanes early on. Both champions, Mordekaiser and Trindamere, are champions that might want to duel as we see them already dueling early on. Okay, 
looks like a gank top lane level 3 from Lemon Curd. The flash away from Trindamir will guarantee that he doesn't get knocked up by that Java and EQ combo. But that is an early flash and that's an early win over for that top side of AGSB. And now I can imagine that Lemon Curd will be looking to capitalise on that in the next few minutes as he knows that that flash is down from the Trindamir. Still not much going on down in the bot lane. Basically full mana uh, for the AGSB side. Obviously not so much on this Velkos who has been trying to poke. And that's a flash out from NHX as he caught, catches up the Velkos. Velkos also flashing and that's a flash for flash. Neither side really gaining an advantage there. Looks like this Trindamir isn't having too much fun in this top lane matchup against the Mordekaiser at the moment. Mordekaiser are really bullying this Trindamir in the top lane. Sorry about the jumpiness of the stream there. And there are significant CS advantages across the board for AGSB at the moment, especially in the bot lane as we see the 7 CS on Ash compared to the 36 CS on Misfortune. Now looking at 40 on Misfortune as Ash has only got one more in the meantime. And it might have to be the Velkos in that bot lane that tries to carry with his um, gold that he's getting from his more, slightly more CS than the Ashes. Now really Lemon Curd getting that pressure in the jungle we're talking about stopping Deadwatt on the Nunu from taking his Gromp and taking the Gromp instead of him. He's really starting to cement an advantage for AGSB in this game and yet we are only six minutes in and yet there are no kills. can only imagine that when kills start to come out in this game, they'll have to start going over towards the side of AGSB, as they've already cemented this advantage, and they're now getting the first Drake of the game, this Infernal Drake, which will definitely help them in those fights that they want to start later on in the game. Level 6 now from both of the top laners coming out, so it will be obviously much harder for this Mordekaiser to kill the Trindomir. And the Trindomir has been holding out just about against the Mordekaiser. Kennen coming in for a gank top lane. The ultimate comes from Mordekaiser to try and stop that against the Kennen. We'll see now whether he's able to survive. A flash coming out, he's forced to flash, but he does survive there against those two players from BSC. <coughs> and it looks like Trindamir is still getting bullied by the Mordekaiser, even after that gank. And Kennen comes in just to get first blooded 
by the Syndra, and we also see, unfortunately for the side of BSC, their jungler Deadwatt getting executed by the wolves. A sorry sight for BSC as they lose two members, although only one member in gold to the enemy in such a short space of time. Now have Lemon Curd coming up to this red buff of Deadwatt. Deadwatt is level 3 and Lemon Curd is level 6. So I would suggest that he didn't even need to use the ultimate. The ultimate was perhaps the style points only. And now the ultimate coming out from the Rakan along with the Flash and the Grand Entrance will guarantee them one kill onto this Velkas and I can only imagine a second kill onto this Ash. Ash running for her life here against these bot lane from AGSB, but the exhaust will guarantee them the kill, and that's now four kills on the board for AGSB, and it looks like even Trindema in the top lane is running away from this Mordekaiser. A second Doran's Blade purchase from Ash is perhaps not the ideal choice. Now the grand entrance just about misses the Velkos, but it will not matter as the misfortune at this point in the game just does too much damage for that Velkos to be able to survive there. And even this Ash is going to struggle here, defending against the two players as the Nunu struggling against the Krugs in that top side of the map does not paint a good picture for the prospects of BSC in this game. Emman Kurd now looking for a dive onto this Ash. I'm afraid that's going to be lights out for the ADC for BSC as the second death of the ADC comes out and they're going to get a handful of turret plates in this bot lane along with the Syndra in the mid lane. Falco's doing what he can to stop them. Getting around to 11 and a half minutes here, we're seeing about 100 CS on all the three laners from AGSB, and we're seeing significant disadvantages in that same department from BSC. We're seeing about 70 on the top and mid laners, on the two solo laners, and we're seeing only 18 from the Ash, which means that there's going to be a significant damage disadvantage for these later fights especially as we start coming out of laning phase in the next few minutes. The Ash Arrow will find its mark on the Rakan, but nothing happens from it. And it looks like still in the top lane, just this constant bullying of the Trindomir. Trindomir is still obviously not dying, still holding his own in this matchup but it's certainly difficult for Trindomir to try and get this push on the tower that he so wants with the Mordekai constantly applying pressure and now the Grand Vengeance from the Rakan will find a kill onto the Ash and now similarly the ultimate from the Jarvan will secure the second one onto Velkoz now Mordekai against Trindomir Trindomir gets that shutdown kill Crucial kill there for Trindomir. Now in this matchup, 1-0 up against that uh, AGSB top laner. 
and that is not exactly what Mordekaiser was looking for when he activated that ultimate against the Tindermere there. He was trying to stop him from escaping with that Undying Rage activated, but it kind of backfired on him as now instead he was trapped in there with the Trindomir. And now that will be uh, the first tower of the game taken in the bot lane from AGSB Esports, from Vilfire and NHX taking that bot tower, but Trindomir crucially because he's been able to get that kill and that 500 gold bounty against the Mordekaiser, now able to get a lot of turret plates against uh, Mordekaiser, perhaps even being able to take the entire turret as we see the players from AGSB walking top quite slowly, they're not reaching there in time to stop those turret plates being taken, and perhaps even to be able to stop the entire turret being taken. NHX now walking up just on this last one, but it doesn't matter because the Trindomir has taken his prize of all the turret plates. Nunu still level 4, unfortunately at 14 minutes, is unable to take any jungle camps he wants to because any member from HSB can just walk up and stop him. And so at the moment what we're looking for is for these two solo laners from BSC, from Tr for Trindomir and for Kennen, to really try and have an impact on this game because they are the best um, ways for BSC to gain a winning chance for this game. Rift Herald take by the bot lane and jungle of ADSB. They're now looking top lane against this Trindomir. Trindomir, obviously, he can just walk out of that, but this mid lane turret simultaneously has been taken by the Syndra, and that's possibly also a death, and Kennen Kennen just escapes with the flash there. And now Mordekaiser ulting onto the Velkos. Velkos only level 7 against the level 10 Mordekaiser. There's not much he can do. Just about escapes there. The arrow finds its mark onto the Mordekaiser, but is not going to hold any kills onto him as the Rift Held in the top lane takes a kill. The Undying Rage activated from the Trindomir. He tries to get away. He's trying to actually auto that misfortune, but unfortunately he just lacks the damage to be able to get a kill there, to be able to get that 700 gold bounty that he obviously so wanted in that situation, but now the Rift Held in the top lane is going to be looking for a second turret in that lane as Mordekaiser also looking for that tier 2 turret in the bot lane. A third turret from Rift Herald next to that inhibitor. They'll almost be getting that turret, in fact I reckon that they are getting it now. They're getting that inhibitor at 16 minutes and there's nothing really that BSC can do to answer this. Kennen is not strong enough, he's going to activate ultimate. Jarvan just about escapes there, and yes, all three members have their lives with them intact as they walk away from this fight unscathed and with an inhibitor taken from the side of BSC. Velkas and Ash doing all they can to defend this bottom lane, but it's a 2v1 here and Mordekaiser is certainly not out of his element trying to fend them off here. Trindomir just clearing vision here around um, this topside jungle area here where they have been able to exert so much pressure and as I am talking about that pressure in the topside we also see the jungle pressure that they have in that bot side jungle as well. They basically own it enough that Syndra just walks through and is able to gank through with their uh, through Riftside's own jungle and get a kill onto that Ash. Nothing really that the Ash can do there. I believe there's only one turret left outside of um BSC's base that currently Mordekaiser is knocking on against this Velkos. And we have four members here walking up. Um, the Nunu really dropping to low health levels. And it's this Trindomir that is on duty to try and defend this, but there's little he can do. An ultimate activated from uh, Velkos and from Ash 
He's not going to find the kill as Mordekaiser uses his own in retaliation and is able to quickly get a double kill against them. Unfortunately, with that for BSC, they lose two members in the bot side and that gives the free passage from these members as Kennen uses his ult in a final attempt to stop them from banging on the base. But he'll be easily taken out by these forces and they get a free pass onto these Nexus turrets of BSC's base. Trindamir now activating the Undying Rage, just trying to see what he can do to stop these players, but unfortunately that will be the death of him as well. Grillfire will not go down to that Ignite, but what will go down is the Nexus of BSC, and that is a 15 to 1 game in 18 minutes from AGSB. Now we'll be back in a second or a minute or two for the second game because this is a double whammy.
Okay, hello and welcome back everyone. If you are still watching, we're not quite ready for the next game yet, but what we are ready for is a sneak peek player interview behind the scenes with one of our very own players at AGSB Esports. And here with us right now we have Vilfire, the infamous ADC player for AGSB Esports. Vilfire, hello. tell me what what were you thinking during that game? Um, well, to sort of start of the game, like we were playing safe, we didn't know the level of our opponents. But then uh, towards the end, we started realizing that we were the better team, and we started to punish their mistakes and play much more aggressive with objectives, and with Ahmad invading much more than normal. Yeah, I saw a lot of pressure from you guys in uh, the opponent's jungle. It looked like you guys were quite happy to basically claim that jungle as your own and so i'm wondering what did you think about um that bot lane matchup against the ash Velkos? um it was early levels it's not that easy because the old level one and level two because they have quite a lot of poke but once you hit like three four five six with uh rakan it's just it's pretty free once you hit six you get the muck up charm into mfl which is just basically just free a free double kill which we did at one point yeah but one might argue that that was perhaps down to the fact that the Ash had about 5 CS. Yeah, yeah, that also helps. And the Velkos have more fun than the Ash. But... Was the Velkos a problem at all at any point? <laughs> uh, no, the Velkos was fine. <laughs> Sorry about that, Hong interrupted me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're having a few problems on your end. Yeah, yeah. And now. Tell me about the interaction with the top lane, because unfortunately your Mordekaiser did die yeah, in yeah. a solo kill against that Trindomir. What was that like? You and died. He's just, I guess, just a bit bad, really. Um, I think we should replace him as soon as possible. But it was actually pretty annoying, because we were trying to get a, a perfect game. But um, we had to... But we didn't get a perfect game because Mordekaiser's bad, basically. Now, it does feel like a kind of recurring theme during these AGSB games is that it's almost a perfect game, but there always seems to be one player that does die. Usually, I would say it's NHX, but this time it was, of course, Ewan in that top lane. So uh, would you say that you're going to see it changing that up so that you don't have any of these stray deaths? Uh, yeah, I think just Ewan's just generally bad. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we just won't die as much. It's normally Hong's fault as well. Yeah, so um, we will, we'll try and stop dying and just being bad. But I don't think that's my fault really. I think it's mainly the uh, other members of my team. Anyway, I think I think the uh, the game starting soon. So. Okay, well the game starting soon. Thank you very much, Volfire, for taking the time out of your very busy schedule. I'm sure to do this interview with us. Yep. Thanks and for having I me. look forward to seeing you doing well in the next game. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well, there you have it, folks. That is Phil Fire himself, the AD carry for AGSB Esports, talking to us about his win against BSC. And now they will be playing against Farnborough in this next game as we just wait to get into the game as Farnborough set up for this second game of the day.
Okay, hello and welcome back everyone who is still watching into the second game of AGSB and now we're against Farnborough. Um, we're in Pick and Ban or Pick and Ban has happened. So I can show that for you guys. Unfortunately, I wasn't present for the actual pick and ban itself, but we're able to see here during the spectator delay the champions that have been picked. So obviously, um, we can't see the player names here, but we can see that on the AGSB side, on blue side, we have Lemon Curdle Nunu. He's obviously able to put out a lot of pressure. Again, that is the key word always when talking about Lemon Curd pressure around the map uh, with this Nunu. Vilfire, obviously, the signature Zaya was taken away from him, first picked by the enemy team. So he's taken the Jinx in this situation. Obviously, though, Khan then, that signature pick for NHX. The Syndra again in the mid lane. And the Kled, another kind of bruiser dueling top laner from Ewan in this top lane here for AGSB. And that will be against the Nasus on Farnborough's side. The Syndra obviously against the Kastin. That Jack's in the jungle. And then we're seeing a kind of unusual Soraka um, and Zaya bot lane against a Jinx and Lukan bot lane. So we're seeing kind of uh, what we expect to be a Rakan Jinx bot lane that's always trying to engage against a Soraka Zaya bot lane who while Zaya might want to engage, we can't imagine that Soraka will quite have that same thought process. And so Soraka is more likely to just try and ease off some of um, that engage potential from the Rakan here. Spectator delay just ending. We'll just be getting into game very shortly here. AGSB versus Farnborough, the second game of the day on this first day of the British Esports Championships um, for this year and for this new season. Just getting into game now. We can look at um, some of these mastery points here. And obviously this paints quite the different picture from last game. And AGSB are definitely having going to have to up their game from last game as we're already seeing several level 200s on Farnborough's side. We're seeing someone who's almost level 300 and the level 70 is certainly not something to laugh about, especially with those 100,000 points plus on the Nasus. That obviously will be facing against those around 100,000 points on the Kled from Ewan in the top lane. And obviously also um, that Jinx 86k against um, against that Zaya. As the game started, I will fix up this scoreboard. As the game starts, it starts very much the same as the last one, a five point start, except for the fact that we have Nasa showing off his dance moves in that top side. But again, no invades, no messy starts to this game. We can have a 
red side start for this Nini here. A lemon curd on this Nini. And quite a generous leash on both sides of the board to start out the game. And this is certainly, from what we've seen of the players so far in that loading screen, not a game that AGSB can scoff at. This is a game that we have to imagine they really have to be trying their best for. And the players on the other team, on Farnborough's side, are obviously very skilled or they're obviously very um, experienced on their champions even. And so it's not a win that AGSB can take for granted, but rather one that they'll have to earn if they want to win this. A gank already level two from the Nunu in the bot lane with that snowball will find a catch onto the Zaya. The Zaya gets the knock up and is forced to use flash here, but NHX taking a ton of damage in return and that's going to be a net positive for AGSB. But that's only one flash taken from that Zaya there. Nace is forced to use that spirit fire in the top lane to get some of this CS. And there's Kastin and Syndra happy to just kind of duel it out. Kled now going on the offensive against this Nace. I can't imagine he'll be able to get killed there, but he's certainly able to put down a lot of pressure. And now, talking of pressure, we see a double buffs. Jax trying to get what he can onto this. Um, new, new onto Lemon Curd. Lemon Curd forced to flash and HX also forced to use the grand entrance, but. Now NHX running away for his life, and this is actually quite good for Farnborough as they now get several flashes from AGSB, and that's now um, two flashes from AGSB gone, and only one flash obviously from that Zaya play from earlier from Farnborough. Apologise again for the stutter there. We should be fine now. Now this Nasus really running away here. He's on his last legs. But so is this Kled as this Kled takes a bunch of damage from the tower. Kled deciding that he is okay to stay in this lane. But not so much the, the Kassadin who's stunned up by the Syndra and forced to run away is the Ignite going to get the kill yes it is and that's first blood onto the Syndra and that's the second game in a row where we're, we're seeing that first blood onto the Syndra there um, as also this Jinx Vilfire is not doing as well as last game Vilfire taking a lot of damage here and that's also not on the CS advantage the Zaya and Serac are quite happy to lay down a lot of poke damage onto this bot lane from AGSB, although Serac is certainly running out of mana due to that. Now, once again, now level 6, Cled engaging onto this Nasus in the top lane. We also see some small skirmishes 
We also see some small skirmishes in that topside jungle. That's now a third kill for AGSB there. Kled getting that solo kill in the top lane, the first of the game for him against the Nasus. But it, it's been a long time coming there because we've seen consistently this Kled get damage down onto this Nasus and this Kled really pressuring the Nasus into um, having to back under his tower several times. So we're now seeing leads being gained in the top lane, leads being gained in the mid lane. Of course, in the top lane, that lead is more so in the fact that there is 60 CS compared to 30 for Nasus. That is several kills worth of gold in advantage for the Kled. Of course, that 2 0 up for the Syndra equally is just as important. And so the winning lane here for Farnborough at the moment is this bottom lane. And that's where they're going to have to look for to push for advantages here. Perhaps with their jungler, perhaps with the jacks. Um, and perhaps specifically for some of these drakes. missing a cannon now unfortunately it's not really the kind of thing you like to see but that is 74 to 39 CS and he's quite happy to just stroll on down as equally lemon Crab is quite happy to stroll around their topside jungle taking out some of the vision as Jax is doing the same thing in their bottom side near Drake just setting up was that bottom lane, or that winning lane uh, in the bottom for them, means that they might be able to get the Drake here as the top lane looks to get this first tower with the Rift Herald. Not much that Nasus can do here, gets a Q down onto the Syndra, but that's going to be a taken tower. Lemon Curd now taking a bit of damage from the tower. Now, Syndra unfortunately taking too much from the tower there. That is one kill already over to the Nasus. And there might be a second here as Lemon Curd is looking to try and escape. Lemon Curd almost dead. Lemon Curd does take the death and now it's just whether the Kled can avenge that. The E doesn't quite allow him to get right up to the Nasus. And Nasus now 2-1 and one up against this Kled as that is a failed tower dive really. They have the, they have the Rift Herald with them and yet they still die. And now Lemon Curd really in trouble as Kastin able to get a quick kill onto him. Cast in now, stopping some of that bleeding caused by the losing lane against the Syndra. Able to regain some of that gold that he needs to match up against that as we start to get to 11 minutes here in this game against Farnborough. Now again, we've seen this before, the Nunu coming in with the Snowball, but the silence from Suraka will stop him right in his tracks, and he's forced to go back into the jungle. And I did forget to mention how 
um, red side have fun, but were able to get that Drake at that time I was talking about, where they were able to get that Drake against that um, target push. And so actually, it was quite a favourable play for fun with that um, turret taking in the top lane. And now coming back in for round two of Gangsta's Lemon Curd. And this might be two easy kills for AGSB as Soraka is already running for her life, already dead. And now Zyo is the only one that survives here. And that will relieve some of that pain that the bot lane of AGSB have been experiencing, experiencing in this lane in the bot lane. Again and again and again, we're seeing this Nasus against Kled. It's the top lane classic, um, just always dueling. More vision clearing around this Drake as it spawns for the Ocean Drake, and I can bring up those spawn timers. Okay, to see, we have Ocean Drake in two minutes and a bit. Zai being a bit cheeky there, stopping the back of Phil Fine. Now Syndra in a lot of trouble, but gets the wonderful there stun onto both players. But Syndra is still going to die against this Drax. And in the bottom lane, AGSB will find their consolation in both players here of the bot lane to being taken down by this four-man bottom lane. And importantly, because that gank bottom lane from Nguyen, from Kled, um, was not use, using teleport, he's now able to use teleport to go back up to lane to stop Nasus from being able to take any tower plates and now obviously we get to 14 minutes and now the tower plates are all gone and Nasus is going to have not got any tower plates at all during this game. And suddenly we find that the that for AGSB they suddenly have a lead uh, in what they previously had a disadvantage in that uh, bottom lane matchup but also they're now losing their lead in what was the mid lane matchup, as Cassadin now is 2 and 2 equally and is on par with Syndra's CS. Nasus now coming to take down Syndra. I doubt he'll be able to do anything here, really. He's just taking a lot of damage from Syndra there, enough that Jax is forced to come in and save him. Soraka also. And really now there's four members mid. Farnborough, but they're not really able to do anything about that. Now, Nunu coming in with the snowball, knocking up the Jax. Jax might find his end here. He jumps onto the NA checks, but that is a beautiful four man knock up from NA checks there that results in a triple kill for Jinx and another kill for the Kled. So that is four kills in total there because of the four-man knock-up from NHX. Now, I don't want to talk too early there, but I think that that might be the MVP play of the game. That really has just cemented AGSB in this game as being on the advantage, where before there was a bit of questioning about whether they really had some of those advantages. Now it seems clear with a, when you have a 4-0 Jinx and a 3-1-4 Kled on the same team, it really does seem to become clear that um, there's certainly quite an advantage there. Uh, that's not to count Farnborough out of the game, nowhere near in fact, but it's going to become increasingly difficult for them as this Jinx continues to get fed and continues to get items. Now it looks unlikely 
that the bot lane of Farnborough here are going to be able to get that tower as Kled comes just to fend them off there. And just as we saw him doing last game, he might be able to 1v2 here. Jack's now coming down to make it a 1v3 and really put the odds against Ewan here. Ewan does not realise, but he's just out of leap strike range for the Jax. Jax is unable to utilise that ability to get onto him with the counter strike. And it means that for now, Ewan's quite safe on this clad pick in the bot lane. And he's actually drawing the attention of uh, two, sometimes even three members of the team. Which means that the other four members can really exert some pressure in the mid lane here. They've already caught Jax out with a root. And now that will be Jax dead. Kastin now running for his life, probably able to use uh, that void shift to get out of harm's way. But Nace is not really able to contribute to this team fight as they've just pushed him out of the way. They already take one turret. The Rift Herald is spawning for this second turret and suddenly this game is heavily, heavily in their favor. Kastin just about making it out there without dying. But I can't imagine that it will be the same for this Zyre as the Zyre just gets taken down and this is an 18 minute inhibitor for AGSB and it looks like they're continuing their push just perhaps for this Rift Herald push into those Nexus turrets and now they're running away unfortunately for them the Baron is not up yet it's not yet 20 minutes but they've certainly just made a huge play there it was actually all off the back of um of Kled actually being in the bot lane Kled um, taking away the attention of three members of Farnboy. It was all off the back of that because then when they start pushing in the mid lane there are still two members of Farnboy that are not in the fight and then Nasus is also pushed away into the jungle as they spawn that Rift Herald and there is nothing really that the players from Farnborough can do to stop them pushing into that um, middle lane inhibitor in their base suddenly the game doesn't look as great for Farnborough as it did just a few minutes ago. But there is a lot of um, late game hopes for Farnborough. They have a Cassadin, they have a Jax and they have a Natus. I mean, to be honest, every player on their team, Zio is certainly very strong late game, uh, but of course, especially things like the the Nasus and the Cassidy and the Jax um, can really get strong. But I'm afraid that with the uh, inhibitor being taken at 18 minutes, I'm not sure whether they'll be able to reach that late game soon enough for them. This Kled is still very happy to do this 1v2 trick in the bot lane and this time they're so far away from the top lane that during this push here there's really not anything that these three players can do to defend. Kled is taking so much attention from Farnborough I would suggest that really what Farnborough ought to do here is instead of putting two players onto this Kled put just the one, just put Nasus there because Nasus can probably fend him off and then have the rest of the players in these teamfight situations and these skirmish situations where they're needed because now we see, because still the two bot laners are in the bot lane from Farnborough, this is pretty much a pretty easy baron for ADSB as they're now going to be looking to back, get some items and then go for um, some pushes, well actually they're not looking to back as they go straight to the top lane they probably um, ought to have backed there. But Kled still is quite happy to draw all the attention away from those four players in the top lane and bring it to the mid lane. And if all the members of Farnborough come top, then he gets to push mid, as he is right now. So it's a lose-lose situation really for Farnborough here, because if they're stopping this top lane push, then you can already see Kled is very, very happy to just push mid lane. No backs will come out from the side of Farnborough as Farnborough get absolutely obliterated by AGSB here in this team fight. Vilfire still alive. Some 
hiding from him though um, he does take get taken down by the Nasus but that might be their only consolation for Farnborough as 15 to 5 is Kled is uh, still looking at the Nexus Tower well not at the Nexus Tower, at the Nexus sorry and Nunu's come in, uh, came in for help he's got the Baron minions as well I can't imagine that there's anything that Farnborough can do here to defend and that's going to be a 22 minute win 15 to 5 for ADSB against Farnborough here So, we've had two games today, we've won them both. They've both been very convincing wins for AGSB. And, unfortunately, we're not going to have any more games, or fortunately, depending on whether you wanted to do something else. And so we'll see you next week, probably, with another game. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.